The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two, and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you, have, you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake the, off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed all that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. So today's gospel is about evangelism. In the first part of the story, when Jesus is rejected in his own town, we see how difficult it may be to overcome some of the preconceived notions of those around us about who we are now. We were different when we were in high school or as a young adult. And we were having fun goofing around with our friends or studying hard, maybe. <laughs> then we began to notice that there was more to life than just going to work or socializing with our friends, eh, just having fun. Or maybe we spent all of our energy on work, not saving any energy for our family and for our spiritual lives. Whatever it was, our friends cannot understand why today we are so dedicated to a different way of life. We show them that we are dedicated to something greater than ourselves, something that has greater meaning in our lives, and they don't understand. Maybe they feel left out because we have something they do not have a quality of life that they lack, a spirit that they lack. Maybe this is what the people in Nazareth are thinking about Jesus. They see he has grown in the knowledge of the scriptures. He knows even more than the teachers in the synagogue. They see his increase in wisdom and his popularity as a loss to them. They perceive only a zero-sum game. As a result, they resist his teaching and even refuse to allow his healing power to work, work among them. Jesus does not let these actions to, reactions to the ministry bother him. He leaves and goes on throughout the countryside doing his thing, healing and casting out demons. We humans, however, 
may not be as confident in our ability to ignore the rejection of our friends and neighbors so easily. We think, oh, we're not like Jesus. In this gospel, Jesus teaches us about evangelism. He teaches us it is okay if someone does not listen to our experience of what we believe. He teaches us we can just walk away and shake off the dust of our feet. As always, there's a lesson in his teaching. Our job as bearers of Jesus' message is to witness. Witness. In the dictionary, witness means a public affirmation by word or example of usually religious faith or conviction. Witness is a verb, meaning something is actually done. In this case, affirmation by word and example. Our witness shows others what we believe by how we act or what we say. We are not trying to convert others. Conversion, accepting, or believing in the message of Jesus is the work of the Holy Spirit. Our work is to witness. This is why Jesus tells this is why Jesus tells his disciples that it is okay to walk away when people do not accept the te his teachings. Our job is to plant seeds. It is the Holy Spirit's job to help the seeds of faith grow in someone's heart. If we misunderstand our role in evangelism, it is possible we will be fearful about speaking our faith to others. Maybe we're fearful, fearful of not being able to convert others. However, understanding our role as a disciple to be a witness and not a converter will give us confidence in what Jesus calls us to do. When we have done our witnessing, to be confident that it is just okay to walk away and shake the dust off of our feet and let the Holy Spirit do her work. So what is witnessing? This is not a typical story of witnessing, but it is a powerful one that took a lot of courage. It is a powerful illustration of the integrity and balance between doing the word and speaking the word. And it was offered by one Hugh Thompson at the commencement exercises at Emory University several years ago. Honorary degrees were being awarded. The recipients made the requisite speeches. As is often the case, the students chatted through the whole ceremony. Been there, done that. <laughs> Heck, I'm all in one to get my diploma and get out of there. <laughs> I don't want to listen to these speeches. Honorary, um, it was when a man named Hugh Thompson was speaking. Thompson was probably the least educated man on the platform. He did not finish college. Choosing instead to enlist in the Army where he became a helicopter pilot. On 16 March 1968, he was flying a routine patrol in Vietnam when he happened to fly over a village called Mai Lai. Just as American troops under the command of Lieutenant William Calley were slaughtering dozens of unarmed villagers, old women, men, children, just anyway. Thompson set his helicopter down between the troops and the remaining civilians. 
He ordered his tail gunner to train the helicopter guns on American soldiers. And he ordered the gunmen to stop killing the villagers. Hugh Thompson's action saved the lives of dozens of people. He was almost court-martialed. And it was 30 years before the Army awarded him the Soldier's Medal. As he stood at the microphone, the rowdy student's student body grew still. And then Thompson talked about his fate. Simple words. Speaking of what his parents taught him, and as a child, Thompson said, they taught me, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. The students were amazed at these words of Jesus, words from Sunday school, words from worship, words of Christian testimony. They leaped to their feet and gave him a standing ovation. Thompson took a big risk threatening other U.S. soldiers. He witnessed to his Christian beliefs through his actions. It's not always through actions that we are called to witness. Oftentimes, witness is just telling our story. And this reminds me of somebody I read about, an Episcopalian woman who worked as a clerk in a bookstore and one day, as she arrived at work, she encountered a man dressed as a Hasidic Jew. After turning the lights on, she asked the man if she could help him. He answered, yes. In a soft voice, he said, I would like to know about Jesus. And the woman said, over there in that section over there, there's some books about Jesus. And she turned around, went back to her work. No, he said. Don't show me any more books. Tell me what you believe. As she reflected on the moment, she said, My Episcopal soul shivered. We all are familiar with that. <laughs> but she went ahead in her own words, courageously told him everything she could. We never know when we'll be called to be the one that God is working through. As Episcopalians, we're all sent out through our baptismal vows to proclaim the good news of God in Jesus Christ in both word and deed. Whenever we witness to how God is present and acting in our lives, we are living into our baptismal covenant and God is working through us to show others what it means to be a Christian. Our action, actions do not have to be as bold as Hugh Thompson. They can be as simple as telling a story or smiling at a stranger on the street. No matter how we witness, Jesus is smiling at us as we go about being his hands and feet in the world.